when you're first introduced to swing, it looks a little bit something like this. <laughs> Good morning, welcome to today's vlog. It's great to be back with you. I've got to admit, trying to do vlogs during lockdown is tough. Uh, not only is my hair getting longer and longer and longer, and my beard getting more and more scratchier, um, it's just kind of crazy to try and bring something new to the table creatively each and every day. But today, I wanted to deal with the question that Adam Richards asked me over a month ago. He said, Dan, can you talk about swing feel? For example, what it actually is, and how to practice it. It's a great question, Adam. I'm going to come back to it in just a minute. Now, part of the reason I'm not vlogging every single day is because I'm homeschooling my children, uh, I've got my teaching to do, I've still got my other jobs to do, which are very, very busy, including trying to deliver a new website in a rapid amount of time because the live streaming that uh, they're trying to do in Westminster is as far exceeded what we ever expected, which is fantastic. It's kind of a, a tick because I've been talking about this for a long time, but it just means that my time to actually get creative and get down to things has been rapidly reduced. But one of the things I was doing last Monday, I went on a nice social distance walk uh, and I bumped into my friend Matthew Dilly, who is a sound engineer. And Matt engineered and produced my album Jazz Trio with the guys and we did it at Stapleford Granary which is now even closer to where I live from where I lived before. Uh, Stapleford Granary is like a small concert hall come recording studio. It's got that big room and for me Jazz Vespers was okay. I mean we recorded it at an amazing studio but close miking jazz records just don't sound good to me. I think jazz has to be recorded and played in a, in a bigger room so that you kind of get more of the atmosphere and Stapleford's got that. But I was talking to Matt and we were, I was bemoaning the fact that basically I haven't got a gig in the diary till I think November now. Everything's been cancelled till then and I was just saying, you know, it's hard to get motivated to play and I just really, really want to play. And Matt showed me this new live stream setup they've got there. Long story short, we're hoping this Friday, so this Friday is going to be the 15th of May, I am really hoping to be able to bring you a gig. Live streamed from Stapleford with my quartet. We're all going to be socially distanced, we're all going to be safe, the rules are if you can't work from home, then you're allowed to go into work. That's what they changed it to in Britain from Wednesday. We think we can do that. We think we can deliver it. Um, so stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribing. And hopefully on Friday, we will be the only, certainly in the UK, but possibly even in the world, jazz band able to bring you a live concert performance and that has really motivated me. The other thing I've got to do today is you may have seen lots and lots of people doing projects online. I wanted to get involved in some of them but I've just not had the time but I've now got the place to do it. So I've got to record one on soprano now for the Jazz Vespers team. I've then got uh, another session to do for, for my old six form buddy. Um, we're doing uh, King of the Swingers, recording uh, the two big band parts. We're going to do a, an online big band. Uh, I've got another one coming up for Sios in a few weeks. It's going to be out. I'm not going to spill the beans too much on that. And of course now I've got this gig to practice for, which is really, really good. It's really motivated me, but it's scaring the hell out of me because I haven't really been on the practice wheel for a, uh, quite a few weeks because of just time. And I know now, and it's great. It's motivating me. I know I need to start practicing. Thank you. 
So back to this question about swing feel. Now quite often, for most of us, certainly for me and probably a lot of you, when you're first introduced to swing, it looks a little bit something like this when you see it on a big band score or some kind of jazz music, which is two quavers or eighth notes if you're in the States, it become a quarter note and a quaver, half note, oh, what do you call it? I'm going to deal in English, I'm English. So two quavers equal a crotchet and a quaver with a triplet feel over the top. But the thing is, for me that's useless because swing is a little bit like the way you pronounce certain words. It's a bit like the tomato-tomato argument. Tomato, and I like tomato. Or my children would say grass, class, bath. Whereas I would say grass, class, and bath because I've grown up in a different part of the country from they have and therefore I say those words differently. They look exactly the same on, a, on the piece of paper, but they sound very, very different depending on what context and who's saying them. So in my mind, the way Sidney Bechet would swing something, say over summertime, that classic summertime recording, has got a very, very heavy swing, very much a da bo do ba da bo da bo di da da bo ba da da. Slightly articulated in a certain way. Uh, the swing is quite, you know, laboured and heavy, whereas the way Charlie Parker would play something is a bit lighter. Uh, the way Coltrane plays at different swing feels throughout his career. The, if you listen to those early Miles Davis records, to write the way, you know, to play with Monk is a different kind of swing feel to what he's playing later on in things like Love Supreme is barely swung to a certain extent in a traditional sense. So trying to explain swing feel very much gets me into that kind of something I have quoted before. It's an Elvis Costello quote, which is, you know, writing about music is like dancing about architecture. It's very, very difficult to utilize the English language to explain what swing feel is. It's far better to go away and listen to it. So to go away and understand. The closest I've got is, of course, the Duke Ellington. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Do ba ba do ba da ba do do. I can't, is that the right words? Probably not, but it's that it's that scat style style sorry of singing scuba da 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 Listen to those great scat singers, you know, Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald, you know, listen to how Sarah Vaughan, listen to how they scat, and probably a hell lot of other ones as well, but it's scat singing, and I've heard that mentioned, Ray Wilkes used to talk about that to me a lot, but also I've heard uh, Bramford talk about it like that, Bob Mincer was talking about it in a masterclass, I was, uh, I've heard it's in a Brecker one as well, you know, it should be, solo should be the swing feel in jazz, if you're soloing it over, uh, a jazz record should be something akin to the way a scat singer would do it. That kind of freedom and that kind of freedom within the rhythm to be able to explore it and play it. And it gets back to it's how it sounds. So if you really want to know, Andrew and the rest of you, how to get your swing feel down, it's the same mantra, I'm afraid, from Dan. It's listening to those great recordings, those great artists. It's listening to musicians, not just on the saxophone, listening to scat singers, trying to see if you can scat sing on the instrument and then play it. There was a great thing we did at an Abersol camp years ago where Jamie Abersol got us to basically sing our solos and then play them, not kind of play the solos and try and sing them afterwards, to really try and get to grips with that kind of scat singing idea. Uh, and. That's for me where swing feel is. It's all about listening and it's scat singing. It's do ba da ba dee da ba do ba da dee da da do ba da 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 do. Because there's just so much more to it than just kind of oh something like this. <laughs> Answers the question about swing feel. Obviously, there's there's a bit more to it than that, but essentially, if you stick to those principles of listening, 
trying to imitate a scat singer and understanding that it's different in different contexts, I think you'll get the concept of swing. I'm still working on something. I, I To be honest, I try and just emulate my favourite players and then just, as Parker said, get out there on the bandstand, hopefully soon, hopefully Friday, and forget all that and just play, and that's what really comes out, and that's what matters. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget you can get four free saxophone lessons at cambridgesaxophone.com. My two ebooks are linked below, Make Your Saxophone Sing and Nail Your Scales. Great books to be able to move on. We've got to do some more Nail Your Scale exercises on the YouTube channel, so make sure you're subscribing. Give us a like if you can. Check out my last vlog here. This is what I was up to this time last year. I'll see you really soon. Bye-bye.